Very good. Hello, everybody. This is Tony Callis, and I'm LN Engineering. And uh, I paid a visit to Charles here, and I wanted to cover some basics with you guys because one of the most common questions are, I have a check engine light, or I have a problem, and, it, and the car appears to be running rich or lean, and how do I know? How do I know uh, how to check these problems? And I want you to know that not every problem is accompanied by a check engine light or a most of the time a fault code, but not always. And we call that no fault diagnostics. But um, I wanted to give you the basics and cover the fuel trim system. And really as a mechanic, what we do when you first bring your car in. So one of the first things we do is we run a computer interrogation. And it can be with a, a factory tester or an aftermarket tester. There are aftermarket testers that work and they work really well compared to the factory testers. But if you really want the proper information, usually you're gonna to have to go to a factory Porsche tester. Porsche originally started with what they call a hammer, and then they went to the Porsche System Tester 1, which is the hammer, Porsche System Tester 2, which was a laptop, and then they went to a PWIS tester. The PWIS tester, the Porsche Integrated Workshop Information System Tester, uh, version one, came out and again, it's a laptop version. Uh, it started, it changed our world. And uh, not as much as the Hammer did when it came out, the Porsche Hammer, but uh, with the 964, which were the 89 through 94 911s. But um, the PWIS 1 did change our world. Then the PWIS 2 came out on, again, another laptop and uh, PWIS 3 is our latest tester. I actually brought one with me. I wanna show you what that looks like. So this is a PWIS 3. And uh, it's the latest tester from Porsche that just came out. It's roughly uh, about $30,000 to kind of get it rolling and then uh, $20,000 a year after that. Now we all know that's difficult for uh, a lay person, not to mention most shops. But if the shop is serious about what they're doing, this is definitely the way to go. Now, if you wanna take a step sideways, and I don't wanna say down, if you wanna take a step sideways, there is an aftermarket tool called an Autologic. Now, there is a newer Autologic, but this is my favorite one. It's an older one, and it actually has really good flow characteristics of navigating the computer and pulling faults and looking at fuel trim data. Okay, so you may say, well, where do I start if I have a fault or if I have a running problem? The first place you're gonna start is explaining to the mechanic or to the service advisor or looking at it yourself and saying, what is happening here? Where did this start? Was the car worked on before? Did I replace a part? Really, most of this is common sense. And I tell a lot of people that anybody can do what, what I do on these cars. You just need to kind of get the basic understanding of where you wanna start. So what I do is I'll talk to the client, figure out what happened to the car first. What did you put an aftermarket part on? Or did you uh, replace injectors? Or uh, did you just get fuel? Because certain things like a customer may come in and say, my car was just towed in. And, or, or my car was just, uh, I just got fuel and, and then it wouldn't start and they tow the car in and it starts right off the tow truck. Well, most of this is our, our, our pattern failures with Porsches. Like if they just got fuel, I know, and, and the car won't start, I know that the purge valve, which purges the fuel tank, um, is stuck open. Because when you put fuel into a tank, air has to come out. And it isn't just air, it's, it's uh, fuel laden air. So when that purge valve that purges the tank, that vents the tank, is stuck open, you're putting fuel in the tank, it's going to fill the intake system with uh, a really heavily fuel-laden uh, air. And then it basically um, floods the engine, like you would see with a carbureted engine, and then the car won't start. Now look, you may say, well, I don't want to pay a mechanic for a diagnostic. Shops need to charge for diagnostic because they're charging for their knowledge and, and that way they can uh, help keep the doors open. So let's go back to what I would do when I have a car with a problem. First thing I'll do is I'll discuss it with the client or I'll look at it log logistically um, uh, with what's happened and, and what, what has, has gone on with the car. Next, I will perform an interrogation with a scan tool. And if I get faults, that will help me. That doesn't tell me what's wrong, but that gets me in a good direction of where to look next. I tell everybody, don't be in, uh, thrown off by computers. Computers really are stupid. They only know how to add and subtract quickly and what they're told. And what I mean by what they're told is uh, humans 
program computers. Humans build computers and humans operate computers. So computers really aren't the answer. They just are very quick and they have the knowledge in them that we can use to help scan the car. So don't let that throw you off. Same with the computers in the car. So I scan the car, I look for computer fault codes. I look at those faults and I start putting the puzzle together about what's happening. I also like to smoke test the intake system. I always do this cold, meaning a cold engine at ambient temperature. And what that does is when you have an air gap, like an intake manifold isn't sitting down properly or there's a, a hole in something, the hole's gonna be larger until you warm up the engine. And generally speaking, these items are gonna close off. The intake system's gonna close off these holes. A little we a hole in a rubber boot's gonna usually close off. Um, that's what we found. So we will smoke test. We'll put smoke into the intake system and pump it in there and we'll look for where it's coming out. There's no magic to this, right? So there's, um, and, and I, don't, I do not like when mechanics go and just start replacing parts on engines uh, or on cars when they haven't diagnosed the problem properly because we call that a shotgun approach, right? Or throwing darts at a dartboard in, 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 in a black at night, <laughs> a room in the dark. Um, so I like to run these tests and one of the tests will also be fuel trim and I'll, I'll cover fuel trim here in a moment. Um, so between the fault codes and a, quite a test drive if we can and um, the fuel trim numbers, smoke testing it, all of these tests will give us a good idea of where to go. Now we don't want to just run all these tests. We want to run one that, that seems associated with the problem that you're having. So let's start with the fuel trim. Let's say we have fuel trim faults where it's showing that it's running lean. Now here's what throws most mechanics off. Generic faults, let's call them P faults, right? Powertrain faults are the ones in the fuel trims. So let's say we have a P and I'm just gonna throw one out there. Well, let's just go with this. So we know we have a powertrain fault and we have the first digit which tells you whether it's a zero, a generic fault, or a one, which means it's a manufacturer specific fault. Okay, then we can go with a two and a three. And these rotate. This is a generic fault. This is a manufacturer specific fault. This is a generic fault, manufacturer specific. The problem is, let's say you get a P0172 or you get a fault for lean running and you look, you go and Google it for Porsche or you get your Porsche fault and you go and Google it, that's not gonna match your Porsche necessarily. So what you're looking for is you need to make sure and be careful because Porsche will give you one fault and it says below limit and it'll give you the same fault code and it'll say above limit. Meaning one says below limit, it's taking away as much fuel as it can and one means it's, and it's the same fault code number so it'll throw you off. Above limit meaning it's adding as much fuel as it can. Or, and it's the same thing when it talks about cam timing, taking away cam timing or adding cam timing. So be very careful when you're discussing fault codes and they're generic, meaning P0. Then you deal with the system, whether it be fuel system, fuel, the fuel trim system, and then you have your actual fault code, 14, 70, whatever that fault code may be. So first of all, it's very important to know that if you're dealing with a generic fault, it could mean both lit, rich and lean. So now we're gonna move into the fuel trim system. Now, this is the most widely misunderstood system there is, at least for Porsche, because Porsche has their own language. And I tell everybody, don't worry about what the word means. Don't try to learn the, the, the vowels and, and the origins of the word. Just learn that, you know, Bowden is floor, Fenster is glass. It's a memorization technique. Just like with any language, if you're a kid and you learn the language properly, you learn the basis of those words. But here, I want you to just understand that RCAT means idle in a newer car. And that uh, FRA means uh, cruise in an earlier or a later car, depending on. So just remember what those mean and its memorization. Okay, so we're gonna start out with the beginning of fuel trim as far as what first comes into play. And it's like a triage. If you remember triage, they go and handle the most important things first and then it moves on. Remember that fuel trim is based around protecting the catalytic converter. 
And why is that? Because the catalytic converter is what actually eliminates most of the, the dangerous gases that come out of an engine. Um, the engine needs to be running properly. The internal engine, com uh, internal en uh, combustion engine needs to be running properly. But in the end, the catalytic converter is what handles these dangerous gases. So everything you see in emission system is based around protecting the cat. Now, there are many influencers like uh, the, the fuel injectors and uh, the amount of air entering the engine and the amount of vacuum that it can see leaking in and whatnot. So, and these are sealed engines and the sealed engine uh, means that the inside of the engine case or block has a vacuum. It is a negative pressure and we want to maintain a certain amount of pressure or vacuum there. And if it's higher, the engine can run leaner. And, if it, and, and I'm talking about in the crankcase system itself, where the dipstick goes, uh, where the crank shaft is, that vacuum needs to be a certain amount. And if it's too high, the engine will run leaner. The problem is if it's too low of a vacuum, the engine run, will run lean. So you have to be very careful. You can't just assume one side of the spectrum is one thing and, and the opposite is, is just the opposite. It's not true with these engines. So back to fuel trim. I'm gonna first show you what we call short-term fuel trim. Now, please do not get this confused with domestic cars. It's a totally different thing, totally different. So I have, I've been teaching professionally for about 15 years and domestic mechanics, domestic car mechanics come into my shop, uh, my classes and they, they think they're way ahead of the game by knowing fuel trim really well and they have to start over when it comes to Porsches. And BMW is the same thing. So when you have a vacuum hose off or you have a vacuum leak, you need to look in the short-term fuel trim first. Short-term fuel trim usually is totally out of the picture with most of these cars and I'll show you why. So we have short-term fuel trim And when you look in there, and when you look in the factory tester, and you may not see this with, with a generic tester. The Durametric, Durham has built a very good tester. He does a great job. It's a laptop-based system that will give you the proper numbers. If you go and buy a 20 or 40 or $300 tester, $600 tester from the local uh, auto parts store, I don't think you're going to get anything you're looking for here. You're going to get generic fuel trim. I would be very careful about using generic fuel trim. Yes, I'm a purist, but I want to show you how Porsche does this and what their values mean. And so you can utilize this information to repair your car properly. Or if you have um, a, a, a new engine that you just installed, you'll know that it's running properly, or at least the fuel trim system is. So we have, we'll start with fuel trim, uh, short-term fuel trim. Short-term means that if a vacuum leak occurs or there's a vacuum line off, this system would be the first to the, to the scene. It will help the engine run properly, but it can only do so much. It can only operate on a very small scale. So if you look in the tester, short-term fuel trim in the tester is oxygen sensing. Then in the later cars, around 2000, they changed it to fuel trim mean value. Now you would think mean value means where it should be. The actual value it should be at, where it wants to be at, but that's not what Porsche means. What they mean is short term fuel trim. And they change these numbers throughout the years and it confuses all of us. The newest cars are actually short-term fuel trim. So if you look in the Porsche testers, you'll see oxygen sensing. And, and people come to me and they go, oh, it says oxygen sensing. That means that, that uh, an oxygen sensor has a problem. No, absolutely not. This is short-term fuel trim. This is what comes to the rescue first when there's an issue. But it has a very small scale that it can correct things. The scale is actually... Uh, in, in roughly percent, it's, it can correct about 25%. So 25% taking away fuel, 25% um, adding fuel. So if you're looking for a one, you're looking at about a 25% change here. Now, this system, most of the time is out of the picture. This does not turn on the check engine light. 
long term turns on the check engine light. So if you're looking at this system, I have to tell you that you're, you're wasting your time most of, most of the time that you're diagnosing a car. You don't want to worry about short term fuel trim. Maybe in a domestic car you look at that and you add that up with long term fuel trim, but forget about that when you're working on a Porsche. So now we have long term fuel trim. This is the one you're going to pay attention to. This is the system that matters. So Porsche has their own names for things. Now I want you to understand what these mean for the most part. You have a no load area, also known as idle. So I say it's roughly below 1700 RPM. Okay, so less than 1700 RPM. In the older cars, this was known as TRA. So if you look in the tester, it's gonna be denoted as TRA. Then around 2000, they changed it to RCAT. And then later we went to milligrams per stroke in the direct DFI injected cars. Because what they're doing is they're spraying fuel with the injectors multiple times. In the earlier cars up uh, from 2009 on, they went Three, up to three strokes with the injectors. In the 17 and later cars, actually 20 cars in, in the 2020s, they went up to five injection pulses. And how they did that was they went to a piezoelectric injector. It's a very, very fast crystal injector. And so that's how they went to five pulses and controlling the fuel even more so. Okay, so back to long-term fuel trim. We have a no load, and then we have a load circuit, or cruise, it's also known as cruise. So we'll call it 1700 or above, roughly, don't hold me to that. And then this is known as FRA, and in the newer cars it was FRAU and FRAO. They broke that up into two different categories, so if you look at a, a graph You'll have FRA down in uh, U in the bottom, or FRA, FRA U, and FRA O. So they kept trying to find out where they could adjust the fuel. Now, I'm sticking mainly to idle because most of the time, if you have a problem under the load or cruise range, you're probably dealing with a fuel delivery issue, like a fuel pump or a clogged fuel filter or possibly injectors. Um, I'm not telling you injectors can't have an idle problem? Most likely it can, but I want you to think about fuel delivery here. Okay, now, long-term fuel trim. TRA in the earlier cars was measured in a milliseconds. It would change the, the, the time the injector, the fuel injector stays on. Now most cars, let's just speak in generalities, most cars are around two milliseconds at idle. Let's just say 2.0 milliseconds. That means that this system is capable of adjusting in about half a second. So it's right around 0.4 negative to 0.40 positive. That's all it's capable of. So that means if the car was at two, it's at 1.6 to 2.4 milliseconds. That's how long the injector stays open. Our cat can adjust, it adjusts in percent. So it goes from negative 6% to positive 6%, meaning that zero is what it's looking for. So if you have, let's just say a 2000 through 2008 car, your, your fuel trim at RCAT is looking for a zero. Now, are you gonna see exactly a zero? No, I hope not because if it's, if it's perfect, it's too good to be true. So I would look at negative six to positive 6%, and I start to worry around the halfway point. So negative 3.0% to positive 3.0% is fine. Anything outside of that range is where I start to worry. Now, again, I'm gonna cover this in generalities. I'm just gonna be very basic. Those points where the check engine light comes on, that negative six and that positive 6%, are what I call the mode six value. And that mode six value with everything in the engine is what turns on the check engine light. So you can look at cam timing. Uh, if you can find the mode six value for any item, 
that's where the check engine light comes on. And that's hard to find with Porsche. But we know at negative 0.4 and positive 0.4 on the early cars, we know that negative 6 and positive 6, and we know in milligrams per stroke, it's negative 3.5 positive 3.5 milligrams per stroke. So if you have an 09 and later car, all the way up to the 2020, that's the number you're looking for. I've had people come in where their check engine light was come, was on, and I looked at it, and, and, and it isn't always a problem. The customer had checked the oil while the engine was running. They had the oil cap off, allowing air to get into the motor, created a lean running problem, and I put everything together in the puzzle and I said, there's nothing wrong here. Did you just check your engine oil? And he was like, yes, I did. So there isn't always a need for a part replacement. We have to look at these um, in a holistic approach to make sure we're not just replacing parts for no reason. So no load is an idle. This is long-term fuel trim. Uh, I want you to look at it like this is the first thing to the problem. Then when it reaches its limit of 25%, long-term fuel comes in. When long-term reaches its limit, the check engine light comes on. So I know I have some chicken scratch here, but I wanted to make sure you understood what we're looking at. Um, load or cruise at FRAU and FRAO, it actually is looking for zero with a 20 to 30% change, which is a wide, wide value. And, and, and it, so it gives it a lot of room for a problem mainly the idle range are what we look for and if we have a lean running engine we will usually smoke test the car this is going to be where your smoke your your vacuum leaks are coming to play this is where your fuel delivery is going to come into play for the most part all right thank you